So when we bring it up, here we go. So you were concerned about going in and coming back up, were you? Yeah. Okay. I, I think you've probably worked quite hard on that over the last uh, last few months because it doesn't yeah. look like you're okay. doing that excessively now, which is really good. Um, so we'll just go straight underneath the water. Now, you see here, it does come up a little bit. So it sort of goes in on that left-hand side. I'll just go forwards here. It goes into the water. Yeah. And you see how the, uh, the fingertips are obviously the highest point there within the stroke? Yeah. So just draw that on. I'll, I'll just swim it down to the rear, yeah. yeah, that's fine, yeah, no problem. It's much better than it was though, because before yeah. you were Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when, when you said that... Coming back to the surface, so at least you're entering the right place now. Absolutely. You just need to get the elbow yeah. above the wrist, yeah. Um, it's way better, than, when you said that's what you were doing, I, yeah. you were way better than I was anticipating you would be. Yeah. Um, just bring in this uh, video clip here. This is uh, Rebecca Adlington. Right. Um, I'll just show you from the, from the side here. Nice stroke, eh? So you see how she just tries to get into that position whereby she keeps her elbow higher than the wrist and wrist yeah. higher than the fingertips? Yeah. Bends the elbow over, keeps the elbow nice and high there. And she gets into this position just a little bit sooner than yourself where that... She's got this sort of position happening here. Now she's somebody who swims with a very long stroke for her height and build, yeah. but it's not overly long. She's still got a very good stroke rate. Um, what we see is when you pull through, especially with this uh, left arm here. See the difference in the amount of bubbles coming off the palm of the hands there? Yeah. So when the hand goes back up, it almost catches a little bit of air back, and then yeah. brings it back down, basically. Um, if you look at the difference between the two of you in terms of the, uh, the kicking, because of that at the front end of the stroke, it almost forces you into over-kicking a little bit. Okay. So if you've got any sort of dead spots or delays at the front end of the stroke there, by, uh, and what I mean by that is going down and then sort of coming back up, you have to sort of propel yourself through that by utilising the leg kick. Rebecca here is swimming at 112 per 100, you're swimming yeah. at about 117 per 100. If you just look at the difference in the, uh, the amount of force coming from the legs, yeah. she's got a very, very gentle leg, leg kick there. But it's 112 easy for her. Well, 112 is very easy for her, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But the, the point there is, I suppose, is because that catch is just a little bit more effective at the front end yeah. of the stroke, it's you know she's able to um, able See, to keep yeah. that rhythm going yeah. with it within the stroke it's there. Quite simple, really. It doesn't look that extraordinary yeah. what she's doing. Does no, it? no, 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 exactly. Real no, there's nothing. Hyper mobility or anything involved. Absolutely, there. absolutely it's not. Just, no, uh, absolutely not. One of the things that you have to be, uh, I suppose, a little bit mindful of is um, this is what I was asking about with shoulders earlier on. Yeah. Is that if those hands tend to sort of extend across the centre line there, yeah. then that can also that can also affect how what sort of effective position you're getting for the catch and pull through. So yeah. if your arms cross in front of your head, your elbow typically is going to be actually sinking or dropping in the water there a little bit. Okay. So just sort of being mindful of that. We use a um, pair of paddles, Jack, which finish freestylers. Don't know if you've seen them. They're actually shaped like an arrowhead. Oh, yeah. I think I've got some in my, uh, in my bag there, basically. Such that if you enter into the water and cross over non in front of your head, the paddle actually falls off. Okay. So it actually teaches or trains you to actually keep the alignment a little bit better into the water. I'm being a bit picky there because it, you know when I'm talking about crossovers with most people, we're talking about over <laughs> yeah. here. To be perfectly honest yeah. with you, um, yeah. But it's, it's yeah. Any any any, um, any little tip, a little bit better on that side as you as you extend forward there. Yeah, you can see it floats a wee bit. It's just a centimetre or so either direction there. Wasn't it? That's yeah. e that's exactly right. Yeah. Do you um how do your shoulders feel when you swim? Do they yeah. tend to be alright or yeah fine. yeah yeah yeah. I mean. One of the precursors to like a bit of shoulder pain or impingement can be a slight crossover combined with a slight thumb first entry into the water. Okay. So you see when you're going in, you're just sort of pitching that thumb into the water a little bit first. Yeah. It needs to be a little bit more fingertips first. I mean, just like I, 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 I learned to swim over here. That at some yeah, point. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned to swim over here in the UK, and it's still on the on the teaching uh, system over here to enter thumb first into the water. It's really bad. Yeah. Like it should, it's, it, it's way way out of date. Um, my wife's actually a physiotherapist, so you know I'm lucky yeah. in that respect that you know she sort of passes on a lot of the information. From yeah. To swim, swim for a long oh, time totally, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's exactly what it's from. Yeah, yeah. It's not something you probably do. Even, you know, you're not probably doing it purposely or anything like that. Um, that being said, your alignment's actually pretty, um, pretty good. When the when you do cross over in front of your head there, look, the legs can sort of scissor kick apart a little bit. Yeah. Um, because you've actually got quite a rapid six feet leg kick. It doesn't affect you as much as somebody who's maybe swimming with a more of a steady leg kick. Yeah. It's, it's not, believe it or not, that looks crazily uh, exaggerated, but you can see it a lot, don't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially when somebody really crosses over in front of their head there. You seem to breathe 
quite far out. Yeah, yeah ab absolutely. So the head, if we just sort of watch that in slow motion, see how there's like a, um, just play this really in very, very slow motion here, look. So this is the angle, but it probably looks like I actually come up. Out. Yeah, that, that's right, yeah. So let's just play this in slow mo. As that right hand goes forward, the body sort of, or the body should be rotating towards the left here. Okay. So it's sort of extending forward there basically as you're rotating. There's almost like a secondary flick of your head. It's almost like you're turning your head fractionally late to get the breath in. So that's what, what you're seeing is like a flick and a lift. It's basically you just breathing ever so slightly, or turning your head ever so slightly too late. Okay. And we're not talking a second too late, we're talking the tiniest fraction yeah. of a second too late. So it's maybe just worth, worthwhile thinking that when you go to take a breath in, just almost feel like you're turning your head just a fraction sooner. Can you see how, what I mean there? You're actually getting to full extension and then the head turns sort of, can you see that yeah. Jack? Almost sort of independently, so it's here. Yeah. And then it's like a slight flick of the head just a fraction later. One of the best drills to actually work on this, we do it loads over in, um, over in Perth and it's quite a hard drill to actually get right. It's, is what we call it onco over there. It's basically single arm drill with the other arm down by the side. Yeah, yeah. So what it's trying to train you to do is trying to get the timing of the head. So the head actually just follows the rotation of the body as opposed to it being two separate movements. Yeah. So it's a roll. See how the head's not moving really? Yeah. It's actually rolling in line with the body. The other difference is here is keeping his spine in completely in neutral. Absolutely, so yeah, what yeah. What you're, you're doing, it's very common, is, is you're lifting okay. the head. Right, so yeah. As opposed to just rotating the whole yeah, system. I haven't got good yeah. rotation, I don't think. Especially through the, through the open But it's, just yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it's, it's a question of where your chin is relative to your sternum almost as well, isn't it? It so is, you, yeah, you absolutely. You did that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as opposed to As opposed that. to almost keeping yeah. the chin yeah. towards the shoulder a little bit get more. It? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And that's really common though. And, and, and the thing is that in open water, <laughs> yeah. sometimes you do need you to do, do, need that. To do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 especially, yeah. yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So it's, but in terms of um, keeping your stroke a bit straighter and maybe shorten out this timing issue because obviously it just takes a fraction of a second out of the you know instead of having to do that which is a longer loop you're doing this it's yeah. shorter absolutely like it's helping to get the timing into sync you can say you can say that same drill one stage but i was telling you about these pointy paddles beforehand this is the same drill but done with the lead arm with one of the small paddles on yeah so the whole idea is that you know as the hand goes into the water here the body's rotating the head rotates with it but because you've got that small paddle on in front of your head there, it just trains you to get a slightly better feel for the water at the front end of the stroke. You just yeah. become a little bit more hypersensitive to that feeling of catch at the front end of the stroke. And you drive the hips and shoulders down into the water underneath the body there. Let's, let's just come back over to here though. We always do a load of those sort of drills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So over time, maybe, you know, yeah. particularly with the, with the sort of whole Absolutely. session on them, but, you know, run of sessions on them. But so underneath the water here, um, you can see that hand, that right hand wide. having to... It's very wide, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's you're having to rotate the, the if, you, if you continue, say, a right hand, so the one Sorry, that's yeah. centering the water now, yes, yeah. see that it's facing that way. The palm of the hand. Yeah, thumb down, and you have to rotate it in order yeah. to do that. And, and then doing that, you should, your shoulder... Elbow your, drops, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can sort of see that position there, basically. Yeah. So if you if you worked on getting the fingertips into the water first, that would actually help to correct yeah. a lot of that. But if we just go back to, um, let's just go back to uh, where are we? Try and get a slightly slightly square, more square on shot of you. What's that? Happy to tell you. Oh, yeah. Near, near the kill ah, Simon oh, there. Oh, yeah. So if you have a little look here, like bring up uh, Becky again. Obviously, I mean, obviously Rebecca's a pool swimmer, but um, yeah, yeah. she's quite a good. Uh, exactly. In some of these angles, she's actually pretty good. Um, oh, well, I'll swim right here. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see underneath the water there how she just has that hand. A little bit more directly underneath the shoulder yeah. there. It's not necessarily what you're doing here. I've seen many, many elite swimmers doing exactly what you're doing. So it's, it's, it's obviously not a major issue. Yeah. Um, but one of the things you might want to experiment with is whether or not bringing that hand in underneath the shoulder actually works a little bit better for you. Yeah. It might not do, but it's worth actually just sort of um, having a little try with that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, 
obviously the hand out just a little bit wide. But like I say, I have seen some really good guys what, swimming like this as well. What I would say is that the thing is you need to change the front of the stroke first. That absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. After you change the front of the stroke, it's corrected that, yeah. this is different anyway because to some extent you're searching now. What you're doing is because you don't quite get it early enough. You're, you're always for searching extra. for the best possible position. Absolutely. Whereas if you're in the good position from this kickoff, then you, you know, you just continue through. That's right. So I, I, I think personally, I would say focus on getting the front of the stroke right. De first. Definitely. Then definitely. Look at it again after you've fixed that. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have, um, just go back to this angle here. Just try and get a shot of Rebecca here reaching into the water. So see here how Rebecca's hands, fingertips are actually lower in the water than, than her wrist obviously, and a little bit lower than the elbow there. But if you look at the depth of the fingertips relative to the surface of the water, they're also lower than yourself. Yeah. So what Jack's saying there is obviously getting that hand entry into the water correct first is going to be a good thing. Yeah. Um, we know that you enter thumb first into the water, you'd be get it better off getting it coming in fingertips first. Yeah. And if you could aim to almost spear just a little bit deeper in the water there, probably going to enable you to actually keep that elbow up a little bit higher rather than actually dropping it down. Yeah. I'm seeing what I'm saying. It almost feels like you, that looks like you're going to be losing a little bit of this catch. Yeah. But the front part of the stroke, if the elbow's dropped down, you're not really catching the water. You're having to actually press down on the water first before you start to get any sort of useful forward propulsion there. Whereas Rebecca gets into that position. I mean, even here, she's already into that position where she's catching the water like and pressing the water back behind it's her. It's quite interesting because it's not as extreme as I would have expected. No, no, it's not. No, absolutely. You'd expect her elbow to be yeah, right the way up here. No, no. Really that's that, that's yeah, exactly yeah. right. But it's, I mean, it's a beautiful, uh, it still gets into a great position yeah, underneath yeah. the water there. So, you know, in a nutshell, that's what I would um, recommend really for the uh, for this stroke. Um, yeah, just, just getting the uh, hand entry a little bit better. Have you... Um, I think this is definitely... I mean, it's, oh, it's so much better than yeah, it was yeah. when we filmed just before yeah. Christmas, wasn't it? Time, Even yeah. the way you described it, 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 you can tell it's obviously improved massively. Yeah. Um, just one note on the on the kicking again. Yeah, it's a good bit of right angle of kicking. You can there. see that, can't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like I saying, if, if there's anything slowing you down at the front, i.e. sort of coming up and like yeah. almost scooping up towards the surface, it's going to force you non into actually kicking a little bit harder to get through that. And what we can see, if we're just looking at the, the other leg behind this one here, it creates quite a bit, like jo uh, Jack says, like quite a bit of a right angle at the knee. And because your quads and your hammies are so, such a large muscle group, when you're bending and flexing as much as that, it does create quite a bit of, uh, it does require quite a bit of oxygen and energy to actually be able to power from the knees quite as much. It's also resistance as well. Uh, uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. More important this That's year. exactly right, yeah. How, Resistance. You see how the knee drops down below the body there, yeah. whereas when Rebecca's kicking, her, her legs pretty much stay like this one here, and the one yeah. closest to the camera, whereas it's the other one's just dropping down. It, no, no, it'll, it'll do it on both sides basically, so yeah. it's a little bit more pronounced maybe on the right hand side there, but it's, that's really in a response to what's happening up at the front. Yeah. So rather than, like Jack keeps saying, right, it's almost like a cause and effect. Rather than actually thinking to yourself, okay, I've got 12 different things to work on there. If you work on the front part, most of it will actually fall into place and actually you'll make those adjustments as you, yeah. as you go along, which should be really quite useful for you. But it's um, yeah, it's good to see. Let me just, I'll just show you this, um, this example here, look at the front. So just immediately before you sell, film, I think this is all right. Is this, um, yes, yeah, that's that's right, yeah. That's Lois. That's Lois, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, this is her going at, this is when we'd um, asked her to breathe bilaterally, um, just for the purpose of this little exercise. Yeah. Let's come on to here, though. Pop this one. Just to sort of show you the, um, the difference between the two sides. See how wide her arm is when she's pulling there, but yeah. see how straight this right one is? <laughs> So the right one's very, very straight and very deep, and she's doing that to basically lift herself up to get a breath to her left, because she, she says she, not, she almost defaults to breathing all the time to that left-hand side. Yeah, she only breathes one side, I think. That's, that's right, yeah. See the little sort of head bob there? And she's going into the water, but then we got her to try uh, the little tempo trainer. Just lifted up the, uh, the stroke rate a little bit. She said she knew she breathed, she, she said she knows she strokes smoother when she goes with a, um, uh, if she can do it with bilateral breathing. Um, 
still out a little bit wide, but this is her, this is her swimming at about seven strokes per minute quicker. Or three and a half strokes per minute, even, yeah, in, in, your, in your terms, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll do a little recording for her and give you the uh, yeah, DVD yeah, if you yeah, like yeah. And, uh, and go through that. But I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, it's, at the end of the day, you're swimming 117 for 100. You didn't look like you, it was absolutely busting it got to do yeah. that. So yeah. it's, it's all good stuff. And I reckon just a little bit of tweaking at the front end. Yeah. <coughs> Harry was telling me about your stroke last night. He said that you were really doing that. And you can see that you, like, you'd hardly even pick this up to the, you know, yeah. to the naked eyes. Yeah, you're actually yeah, doing really quite well with it, I reckon. Um, Good. How do you tend to go in the open water or else it's too cool? I'm worse open I think I should swim better open water than and I do. Than what you do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's maybe just a little bit of that to be honest with you. If, if you have been doing this a lot in the past, it's maybe been just killing your stroke rate a little bit. Yeah. So when it gets rough, especially at the start, yeah. it's almost like you you know, you're sort of backing against that turbulence yeah. a little bit. We've got Jack's working on with you there to actually get the hand into the water a little bit better. It should help help you to just Keep the stroke rate up just a little bit higher yeah. and help you to, uh, to swim a little bit better in the, uh, yeah. in, the uh, in the open water. It sounds like, I mean, those sessions you've been doing with them are good. So yeah, they, they are, yeah. Translate that to your, to your racing. Yeah. But what are those so things? Are they? Just in doing some stuff on, on start, starting fast. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Settling into a pace, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah That's absolutely. where I lose, lose my races in the first, I'd say, first. 200 meters. Four, five, and yeah. 200 yeah. meters, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I'll be there for the first 50 and then, God, let her be. Sure, <laughs> sure. And maybe efficiency yeah. issues part of that because you overcook, you have to overcook it to stay with them. Yeah. And then yes, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you have to slow down to recover oh, just yeah. as you get into the first boy, probably. Yeah. Because the one point where you want to be pushing on. So. Yeah. Absolutely. There we go.